I'm making this video as a response to all those messages I've received on YouTube or emails that I've received uh, through my blog uh, from people who are dismayed to discover that they have the mark of the wild beast or the number of its name. What I would like to show to my audience and to those people who've sent me messages that it is indeed possible to remove the mark of the wild beast and the number of its name on your hand or forehead and that by doing this you actually come off victorious. Now I'm encouraged to think that people are dismayed that they've received the mark of the wild beast and I'll show you how Jesus Christ implies that that is a good thing and I believe that if you watch to the end of this video you will indeed understand how that mark of the wild beast is removed. In order to understand that uh, I would expect that my audience would have already watched this video which describes how the mark of the wild beast is received or the other video about how the mark is received on either the forehead or the hand. You may have watched those videos on uh, YouTube or you might have watched them through my blog and on my blog you'll also find uh, that video on how to calculate the number 666 and how people receive the mark of the wild beast. I also describe how the uh, mark is received on either the forehead or the hand. And if you are in fact a person who has watched these videos and understood the implications and realize that you have the mark of the wild beast and the number of its name, then I would like to reassure you that it is indeed possible to remove the mark of the wild beast and that by doing so you will have come off victorious and conquered the wild beast. So please watch through the remainder of this video uh, if you're one of those people who are extremely dismayed at uh, what I've described in, either in my book or on my blog or through my YouTube channel. So now my audience has probably read the scripture in Revelation chapter 14 about the consequences of receiving the uh, mark of the wild beast. And it's in Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 which uh, probably dismays you. And I'll read it. It says, And another angel, a third, followed them, saying in a loud voice, If anyone worships the wild beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hand, he will also drink of the wine of the anger of God that is poured out undiluted into the cup of his wrath, and he shall be tormented with fire and sulfur in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. And so, yes, this scripture is a very terrifying scripture to understand if you now believe you have the mark of the wild beast. Now to, to, to give you comfort uh, through this scripture I like to point out if you realize this then chances are you no longer can be included as a person who worships the wild beast and its image. And if you are a person who's been watching through my videos in my YouTube channel or read my book, good chance that you no longer worship the wild beast and its image, but you may still be concerned about the mark of the wild beast. So continue watching the video and I'll give you some comfort about your circumstance. So now in order to start giving you some comfort, we should go to Revelation chapter 15 now and notice that in verse 2 what it says. And I saw what seemed to be a glassy sea mingled with fire and those who come off victorious from the wild beast and from its image and from the number of its name standing by the glassy sea having harps of God, and they are singing the song of Moses, the slave of God, and the song of the Lamb. So, 
what I'd like to point out to my audience is that those who come off victorious from the wild beast. And so this implies that you've had intimate contact with the wild beast and you know who the wild beast is. Now, of all the people in the world, in my opinion, the only people who will understand this are Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, coming off victorious from the wild beast means that you, at one time, were uh, intimately involved. And coming off victorious from its image implies the same thing. And coming off victorious from the number of its name implies that you received the number of its name and the mark of the wild beast. So how do you come off victorious from all of this? Hopefully now my audience is beginning to get some comfort that in order to come off victorious from the wild beast, you first of all have to have had an encounter with that wild beast and its image and the number of its name. And so now if you have received the mark of the wild beast, you are in a very special group of people who now have the ability to conquer or come off victorious. And if you watch this end of this video, I'll show you how it's done. But first of all, I'd like to now take you to something Jesus Christ said in the book of Revelation in chapter 3. And we'll see in the words that Jesus Christ said to the Laodicean congregation that Jesus Christ talks about the one that conquers who, or who comes off victorious. To the one that conquers I will grant to sit down with me on my throne even as I conquered. So in order to conquer something, you first of all need to encounter it. Because you won't conquer the wild beast or the mark of the wild beast or its image or the number of its name if you have not encountered it. How can a person conquer something that they've never seen or never known or never experienced? In order to come off victorious or conquer something, you first of all have to have encountered it. Now also, if we back up a couple of verses, notice that for these people who conquer, they have to go through some a humiliating experience. This is what Jesus Christ says. All those for whom I have affection, I reprove and discipline. Therefore be zealous and repent. Understand, I'm asking my audience here to understand that in order to conquer, a person first has to be reproved and disciplined, be zealous and repent. And so it implies an experience or a humiliating experience that this person has. Now let's go back a few more verses. And perhaps people who have watched my videos and realized they've received the mark of the wild beast understand what they were like before. This describes a person who does not understand yet that they have the mark of the wild beast. Notice what Jesus Christ says. Because you say, I am rich and have acquired riches and do not need anything at all. So isn't that how a person who already doesn't understand that they have the mark of the wild beast? Isn't that how they feel? That they've already conquered? Jesus goes on to say, But you do not know. You are miserable and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. And so, if a person begins to understand that they have the mark of the wild beast, then that person now knows that they were miserable and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. And so you, you have now gone one step beyond what Jesus Christ is describing here. You did, you do understand that at one time you were miserable, pitiable, poor, blind and naked because you've already realized that you have the mark of the wild beast. So now you should be able to 
fully appreciate what Jesus Christ is describing here and the predicament of these people who eventually come off victorious, the ones that conquer. And so in order to come off victorious from the wild beast, you need to have encountered the wild beast and the number of its name and the mark. Now, if you've watched those videos, and in order to understand this one, you will have had to watch those videos in my channel. You should understand how the mark of the wild beast is received, and it's through the baptismal vows. And so, on the screen now, I have the baptismal vows, the current vows that Jehovah's Witnesses make when they are baptized. And this is in the 1985 uh, Watchtower Magazine on June 1st. And it explains that at the close of the baptism talk what the vows are. And there's two, the vows are separated into two. The first vow is, on the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, have you repented of your sins and dedicated yourself to Jehovah to do His will? And you're expected to answer yes. The second part of the vow is, do you understand that your dedication and baptism identify you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with God's Spirit-directed organization? If you've watched my previous videos, you know that this is the name of the wild beast. Now, once you answer those questions, you then undergo a Christian baptism and if you've watched my video about how the mark is received on either the forehead or the hand, you'll understand that that's what validates the baptism is that last part of your body that goes under the water because a full immersion is required for a Jehovah's Witnesses baptism to be considered valid. In fact, if you do not go under the water, these vows are now meaningless. And if you do not go under the water, the Jehovah's Witnesses will not consider you to be a baptized Christian. So now that you understand how the mark is received through this vow, I would now like to show you how this vow is completely reversed through the disveloped shipping process. So keep this in, in your mind that this vow it identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with God's Spirit-directed organization. And so now we'll go to the published disfellowshipping procedure and I'll show you how this vow is completely reversed. So the announcement of disfellowshipping can be found on page 154 of the Organized to Do Jehovah's Will book. And this announcement of disfellowshipping is in the last paragraph on this page, page 154. So if we zoom in to the paragraph, hopefully you can see that, and examine the announcement, notice what it says. When it is necessary to dissip an unrepentant wrongdoer from the congregation, a brief announcement is made simply stating name of person is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So what I would like my audience to understand here is that the baptismal vow is reversed by the making of this statement. And who is making this statement in front of the entire congregation? The wild beast is. The wild beast is the one who gave you the mark of the wild beast and the number of its name. And in this situation, the wild beast is reversing that. It's removing its mark from you and the number of its name. You are no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with God's Spirit-directed organization. They remove the mark of the wild beast from you. You have now conquered the wild beast and have come off victorious from its name and the number of its name. But I'd like to go back to that scripture in Revelation chapter 15 
and show it to you where it says that once, once again. So here we are back at Revelation chapter 15, and notice what it says. And I saw what seemed to be a glassy sea mingled with fire, and those who come off victorious from the wild beast, and from its image, and from the number of its name. So understand that you may be dismayed and grieved by your disfellowshipping. However, that same process removes the number of its name and the mark of the wild beast from you. They re completely reverse the process that gave you the mark of the wild beast in the first place. You will have come off victorious. Please, I hope that gives you an enormous amount of comfort. But in order to perhaps give you even more comfort, I suggest that you go to my video, which I've named uh, Jehovah's Witnesses Are True Christians, and you'll understand even more the implication of being disfellowshipped from Jehovah's Witnesses. So here it is. It's a video in my channel, Isaiah 30, V8. Jehovah's Witnesses are true Christians. I recommend that in order to obtain even more comfort uh, through what the disfellowshipping arrangement published by Jehovah's Witnesses really means that you watch this video and you'll find that the disfellowshipping uh, arrangement by Jehovah's Witnesses is entirely prophetic that the Bible speaks a great deal about this disfellowshipping procedure and its implication to you as a Christian and I think you'll find that uh, the implication is really quite extraordinary I think you will not just receive comfort from this video, you may also, your grief will now also be turned into joy. You'll be ecstatic over the implication that I describe in this video. Jehovah's Witnesses are true Christians. Do not, not let this title stumble you. Uh, the reason I say Jehovah's Witnesses are true Christians is because they are fulfilling Bible prophecies in a very profound way. There are no other Christian organization are fulfilling Bible prophecies like the Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you realize that you have the mark of the wild beast, you'll understand why I gave it this title. So hopefully you now have received a great deal of comfort and you will receive even more if you watch this video. I invite you to do that. I'll put a link to this video, Jehovah's Witnesses are True Christians, uh, in the description below, in the details below. Please click on that and watch this next video. Thank you for watching through this video. I hope you've received a great deal of comfort.